audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Christians are saints punching above their weight. When we say that someone is punching above their weight, we mean that they are competing against someone they are no match for. They're out of the depths. Spiritual warfare is like that. We find ourselves against a foe much greater than ourselves. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities and powers. Jesus illustrated this with two different analogies. He said it's like a king going to war against another king who's got a much greater army, or like a man trying to build a tower without enough resources to finish it. It would be foolish trying to fight against someone who is much greater in strength than we are. And for this reason, Paul says that we're to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We're to put on the whole armor that He has provided for us. Then we will be able to stand against our enemy. Then we can truly punch above our weight. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Well, thank you for joining us. And we're getting a little sporty this week as we look at saints punching above their weight. And I think it's important to be reminded that the Christian life is described as spiritual warfare, where to fight the good fight of faith. Have you got your punching gloves on, Ken? <laughs> yes. In fact, the Christian life is a balance between battling and building. You look at the two analogies I've just shared about uh, the ones that Jesus gave. You know, he said the Christian life is like a king going out to battle, but it's also like a man building a tower. So there's that balance of uh, battling and building. Uh, you remember the story of Nehemiah who was rebuilding the wall. He had a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other as he rebu- rebuilt the walls. Oh, I reckon you could do some damage with the trowel too. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we push comes the shove, yeah. yeah. So I remember once, you know, teaching about spiritual warfare and somebody came up to me after and said, no, nah, I'm not into spiritual warfare. I said, it's not an elective. <laughs> we yeah. don't have a choice. Yeah. We're in a war whether we like it or not. And if we don't understand that, well, we'll easily become ensnared by well, the enemy. Well, could you imagine somebody, you know, think back, say, to the Second World War, somebody in London saying, ah, oh, I'm not into war, you know, that, yeah. that, that's okay. And then the bombs arrive and yeah. their house gets trashed. Exactly. Are they going to change their tune? As I say, it's not an optional extra, is it? Mm. And the enemy can ensnare us. And uh, I'm thinking of Peter when I say that. He was so confident, wasn't he? You know, Jesus tried to warn him and, uh, um, you know, he was so sure of himself, I'll never deny you and so on. Uh, And he became ensnared by the enemy. And then, of course, when he learned from that, he wrote in that epistle, be sober, be vigilant, because your your enemy, the devil, like a a roaring lion, is walking around seeking to devour you. He was speaking from experience. He was saying, be on your guard. And, And Phil, there's many things that the enemy would use to ensnare us. Look at anger, for example. You know, Paul says, be angry, but don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't give place to the devil. You know, if we get angry with someone and we don't work it out and forgive them and, and reconcile with them, that thing becomes a snare to us. The, the enemy has actually ensnared us. Mm. You've given a really interesting title to this week's program, Ken. I'm curious to know what's behind it. Saints punching above their weight. Okay, well, we're going to look at David's mighty men. Now, David, of course, is a great type of Jesus. In fact, I read somewhere that he was the most eminent type of Christ in the Bible. And therefore, his mighty men must be a picture of us because, you know, they were David's men. We're his men. Mm -hmm. We belong to Jesus, you know. We're his mighty men, if you like, and women, of course. (laughs) So first of all, we need to look at David himself. And it was his initial victory over Goliath that actually paved the way for his men to learn how to be victorious over the enemy. Mm, It would have been a great day to be there, I would think, watching all of that. Would you say that his victory over Goliath is therefore a picture of Jesus' victory over Satan? Yes, I would. Um, There are many similarities when you look at it between David's victory and Jesus' triumph over Satan. Uh, In fact, there's so many similarities. In the end, there's no more room for coincidence. First thing is that um, Goliath himself is a picture of Satan. He's got 666 written all over him. (laughs) Uh, There were three sixes, in fact, six pieces of armor, uh, six cubits tall he was, and um, his spearhead was 600 shekels of iron. So 666, there you go. But also there's a a repetition of the description of him being covered in bronze. I think he says it four times. He is covered from head to head. 
to foot in bronze. Now, actually, Phil, that word bronze in the Hebrew language is the same word that we interpret serpent. So he's a picture, if you like, of Satan. In fact, even Philistine, uh, some etymologists tell us that um, a Philistine can also mean one who rolls in the dust, just like a serpent. And you remember that Goliath came out and for 40 days he taunted Israel. Mm. Come on, who's got a champion? Send him out, send him out, let's fight. And there was nobody. But then, of course, David turns up. And David is a picture of Jesus. Now, the first thing he does, he, he picks up five stones. And Bible scholars I know will know that five is a number of grace. There were five Levitical sacrifices that represented the cross. There were five wounds in the body of Jesus. So Five is a picture of grace. Love the, the numerology in the Bible to you. Look at that. Yeah. This is a whole other subject, but it's, it is. it's just fascinating. Fantastic. Now, of course, that one stone, that's all he needed, hit Goliath right in the forehead. I think you could say that such a thing had never entered his head before. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting that it struck him in the head because right back there in the garden, God said to Satan that, you know, the seed of the woman would bruise his head. Didn't finish him off. Because then David had to run and he took his own sword and cut off his head. So he defeated him with his own sword. And that's, a, again, a picture of Jesus. You know, Satan put Jesus on the cross, but it was that death, that very sword, if you like, of Satan that became his downfall. Because mm. by his death, we triumph over the enemy. Mm. There's so many similarities here. And it's like you said before, you just run out of coincidence. That's right. Now, here's another interesting thing, Phil. We read that David took the head of Goliath and brought it to Jerusalem. Now, why would David take Goliath's head to Jerusalem when Jerusalem wasn't even a part of Israel at that time? Hmm. Um, Of course, we know that Jesus was crucified at Jerusalem. And the place that he was crucified at was called Golgotha. Some scholars say that there could actually be an indication that it's referring to Goliath because Gol, okay, the first three letters of Goliath. Goliath, yeah who came from Garth, Golgotha. So some people say that that's the place where his head was buried. Now, we don't know for sure. We know it as the place of the skull. The place of a skull. I don't know if you've been there to Israel, but it does actually look like a skull. It's quite remarkable. And um, some people say, well, maybe that's where Goliath's head was buried, Hmm. which when you think about it, it will be quite fitting because the cross stood on top of that place called Golgotha, which is a picture of the fact that you know, Jesus bruised the head of Satan. Hmm. Amazing. It is amazing. You said at the beginning that David's victory paved the way for his mighty men, and so that's us in this picture, to be overcomers. So it's Jesus' victory at the cross that makes us overcomers. That's the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah, he's the captain of our salvation. That word captain is archigos, which means a leader, a pioneer, or a trailblazer one who not only explores new territory but actually opens a trail for others to come through. So Jesus won that victory on the cross. He's seated in the heavenly places far above all principality and power. He's put all things under his feet, but also he's given us that authority. And, you know, the Bible says that God will crush Satan under our feet shortly. Now, we triumph over the enemy because He's already conquered. Mm -hmm. Did you know that the word Nike means to conquer? Really? Yeah, it means to conquer. And uh, what is Nike famous for? Just doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I was actually referring to the fact that they make shoes. shoes, That's right, yeah. Sports. So that's that's what he's getting at. He's like, you know, when when a king defeated an enemy, he would usually stand on his head Put his foot on his neck. It's kind of fitting that we wrap up our, uh, yeah. our talk on saints punching above their weight with uh, something about Nike. I don't, do they make boxing gloves? Oh, I haven't looked into that one. But the fact of the matter is that Jesus didn't only defeat Satan on the cross, but he said this. Paul said this, The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The victory that Jesus has accomplished, he passed that on to us. So we don't have, we're not working towards victory, we're working from a place of victory. It's a different subject this week on saints punching above their weight, and we'll have more tomorrow. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book This Is The Life, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision, 
www.abc.org.au Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.